Well, this is weird. <laughs> Jim wants this morning to go get a tractor and I decided to stay back. I'm not really sure what kind it is. I guarantee you he'll be able to tell y'all. Obviously we do not have a lot of free time. For the past three years, our life has been chaotic. In a good way, but our life has been very, very chaotic. Between starting to build our homestead from a pasture to raising up Ladley Rue, as y'all know, doing one or the other is a full-time job. So doing both of them <laughs> has been very, very time consuming for us. In his spare time, which he hasn't had much of in the past three years, obviously, <laughs> he's gonna be working on this tractor. He's gonna give y'all more of the lowdown on this situation, but today I decided that I was gonna stay home and start texturing some of our walls. Every chance that we get, we've been trying to sheetrock mud everything in the house. Like we talked to y'all about, we put over 115 sheets in here and we still have places that need to be sheetrocked. Lots of sheetrock. The sheetrock mud is a never ending process for us. Jim has been really narrowing it down to certain areas in the house and really working on those areas so maybe we could start completing some walls, get some texture on the walls, prime and paint. Now the priming and painting and texturing and wallpapers and all those kinds of things are definitely right up my alley. Both of my parents were contractors, so ever since I was little, I'd be going on the jobs, doing the little things like taking out outlet covers to peeling back wallpaper to texturing walls with them. So a lot of this knowledge that I have of all these things are from years and years and years ago. So I have not textured a wall in at least 14 or 15 years. So this is gonna be a fun thing for me to get back into. And if we like this texture, I think we're gonna try and do it on most of our walls. Jim has done a phenomenal job on working on these seams whenever we get a chance. That being said, there's only two places in the house that I can think of that just need some extra TLC where the wall kind of bulges out. And besides those two spots, everything else is smooth. So we could do a smooth finish, but we both actually prefer a textured wall. So deciding which texture was kind of the fun thing for us to figure out. So what I ultimately decided to do was a Bellagio finish. Honestly, I am not sure what the technical name for this or if it is Bellagio finish. It's just what my parents have always called it. So it's something that I'm very comfortable to do. But like I said, it's been a long, long time since I have done this, but I've seen it done. I've done it. I've worked with them a million times doing this. So we're gonna hope this turns out great. And what better time to do it whenever he's not here and doesn't know. That's right, I'm not gonna tell him. <laughs> I've got my iced coffee. I've got the wall that I decided that I'm going to start on. And I guess it's time to get started. This is so odd. I feel like I have so much room in the camera. Mm. Er, I mean, uh, I miss my Captain Crocs a lot. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's get started. The tools that I'm gonna be using are just three simple things. So the first thing is a, this is a faux sea sponge. I guess a regular sea sponge would work too. A joint knife, you know, sheetrock tool. And last thing is sheetrock mud. Nice thing about doing this texture is we didn't slab on any of the drywall mud. So I'm gonna show you guys in just a second, but these walls, if you look down them, all that drywall mud is not just thrown on there. We've took our time and done layer upon layer upon layer. That way we didn't have to go back and have to do a lot of sanding. There are a few places that have a little bit of a raised spot on them and they're typically just around a screw. But like I said, the good thing about doing this texture, it's gonna cover everything up. I thought of a really, really good idea while I was deciding where I wanted to start doing this. I thought that I was gonna start over here in this corner because it's more hidden than other places. So it's a good place to get a little practice first. I got my sponge and I just kind of swirled around getting some product on here. You don't want to get too much to where you can't spread it and it just globs up there, but you do want to have a good amount that way it's able to come off the sponge. Key trick to doing this is starting in a corner and working diagonal. So we all know like if you start doing something really, really repetitively, it ends up turning into more or less a pattern. So if you can do this diagonal, it kind of takes that pattern look away. Alrighty, no turning back.
doing this kind of thing, you wanna make sure you're working in a section. I'm gonna work in this section over to the window and then I'm gonna come back and see how this is. This is not just how it's gonna look. I'm, I'm gonna go back and knock down this texture, but you have to let it sit up for a little while. If you go ahead and knock it down now, it's not gonna hold this sponge texture that you're putting on the wall. So, apparently we don't have water right now. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have started this project if I wouldn't know. <laughs> oh man, we lost electricity today and we lost water. There's no telling how long this water is gonna be out either. Okay, just another reason why we cannot wait to finally get off grid. This happens to us all the time. I guess it's because we're so rural that we're the last area to get tended to, but okay, I gotta figure out something with this. <laughs> I did start to knock some of this down, as you can tell on the right side of the screen versus the left side of the screen. What I really, really like about this is you truly can't mess it up. You can, I guess, make it where you don't like it, but you really can't mess this up. So no harm, no foul, unless Captain Crocs does not like it. Then I guess, you well, know, that's going to be a lot of sanding. <laughs> Time wise, I set a timer for 15 minutes and it did go off and I started working on the wall, but it just seems still too wet for me. So it kind of just depends on what you feel. I want it to be a little bit more tacky than this. That way whenever I go to knock it down, it still leaves way more of this texture than if I were to knock it down right now. Morning everybody. My day is starting off a little different than normal. Uh, got a call a couple days ago about a project that I've been searching for. I've been wanting to find this particular item. And you know us, we don't buy new. So the item that I was looking for was really hard to find. But we got this call. Fella's got what I'm looking for. And I'm going this morning to pick this project up super excited about this thing it's going to be a really nice item for us to have in the future so i should have plenty of time to work on it in between everything else we're doing with the house build we got the shop build coming up we got a the big porch edition coming on soon we've got a lot in the works over this next summer this next year so this is just going to be one more cherry to stack on top of the cake so we have the car hauler hooked up I have some chains, have a come on. I have everything, hopefully, that I'm gonna need to be able to load this thing up. I have a little bit of a drive ahead of me. I have to drive over into Texas, probably about an hour and a half or so. It's not too bad. I just hope that this item is exactly what I'm looking for because I think that it is. Now, I did talk to the fellow that owns this, and he is not really wild about the whole video thing. Now, whenever I get there, I'll have to leave y'all for a minute until we get it loaded up and get it gone. But as soon as we get away from there and I find somewhere to pull over, I'm gonna stop and show y'all what we got. This is some of the area that I did earlier and it's drying up. And once it's dry, 
you can really tell what you're looking at. I am absolutely loving this look. So update on the little Ford tractor that I got, the little garden tractor. I've been looking for a little small garden tractor and this exactly fits the bill. Now I knew when I got this thing that we were gonna have to do some work to it because the fella that I got it from said that it wasn't even running when he got it. So I knew that I had my work cut out for me and here's what I found. I went ahead and got this thing tore down yesterday. Could start to figure out what I was up against. And I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but right down in there is a bunch of rust. And this exhaust pipe right here was the culprit. So the man I bought it from had a water bottle over the exhaust, trying to keep the water out of it, but it didn't work out. Y'all, these cylinders have so much rust in them, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pull this rabbit out of a hat. Y'all keep me in your thoughts and prayers because Lydia's gonna have my hide if I can't fix this thing. Go into a temp to get a cylinder home and clean the cylinders up right on top of this piston. That way maybe I can take the piston loose from the crankshaft and tap it up out of there without breaking anything. Because I have assured Lydia that I was confident that I could take this motor apart, clean it up, without buying any parts, put it back together and make it run. And I'm not working on the house today, so I had better live up to my promise. When Jim got home and he got to see the texture, he was so excited. Excited enough to go get the paint and primer so we could get this wall finished. We ultimately decided that we were gonna spray this wall and try out this new sprayer that we got. And yes, we did tape off all the corrugation and I think that it ended up being a really good decision on our part. When it came to deciding on a color, we knew that we wanted to do white, but the trick was what kind of white. So we did our very best and decided on a white that matched our tin. 